Hello and welcome to this TIBCO Mastery introduction video. Today's subject is API caching. We will look at the steps required to enable caching and look at the effect of caching on an API. So let's get started and go to the API definitions. We see the APIs that we have created by going through the Getting Started Guide. Let's look closer at the Acme API. On this Mastery area, we have Performance Acceleration or Caching enabled. If this option is not visible, it's not enabled on your area. If you're using a trial account, it's not enabled. For other areas, please speak to the Mastery team to get this enabled. We now have two options. Firstly, we can enable caching at the API level. We do this by setting a time to live, or TTL, for the response data in the cache. This is set as a number of minutes to store the cached data. Our second option gives us more control. Let's select one of the endpoints of the API. We can now set the caching for this endpoint. As before, we can set a TTL for the cache responses, but now we have other options. The first pair controls how we handle HTTP request control headers, and the second pair controls how we build the cache key. This gives us the option to store cache data and associate it at a key level, giving potentially unique cache data per application key. And we can set the cache based on accept headers. For example, we may want to cache both JSON and XML responses for this request. Let's save the changes and switch over to the Postman utility to call our API. If we make a call to our API, we see it respond in around 600 milliseconds. If we now run this a few more times, we will see that the system responds from the cache in around about 100 milliseconds, a saving of 500 milliseconds per call. Let's just try that a few more times. To recap, all we had to do is set the time to live and save the definition, whereupon the system now starts to cache the responses. We hope you found this video useful. Please check out other videos in this series.